Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question, or today's topic of the day, is what can eyes, what can the eyes or eye movements tell me about the brain? And this is a really important question because for us at the Neurologic Wellness Institute, we look at eye movements and we look at the, the eyes of our patients every single day. And I get a lot of questions from patients asking, you know, what does this eye movement mean or what does that eye movement mean? And it all has um, to do with different parts of the brain that are corresponding to that eye movement. And <clears throat> there are many different eye movements and eye movements are kind of the most functional thing that we do to, to tell us where we are in space. Um, eye movements, if you may have heard, are the window to the brain. And so therefore we see so much of us around us and we take all that visual information in and combine it with other information, like information from our neck and our body, our proprioceptive system, information from our inner ear, we combine all that together to say, this is where we are in space versus this is where that chair is over there. or This is where my coffee cup is. And so moving forward, we have multiple different eye movements and all these eye movements allow us to either stabilize gaze, stabilize our focus of attention on one object so we can see it without it being blurry um, so that we can quickly move our change of gaze from one spot to another in case we need to, uh, in case something from our um, left side, our left visual field catches our attention or maybe to foul something that's moving in the air, maybe a bird or an airplane, um, just to be able to follow it and see and pick out the images and, um, and see where it's going. And so we have these functional different, these functional eye movements that we're looking at in, in everybody. And that is telling us the window, that is telling us how your brain is integrating information from its visual, visual fields, from the contextual area that's either in a room or not. And it's really important. So let's just talk about the different types. We have, first we have either, are your eyes not moving and they're just fixating or are they moving? And so let's talk about the four fixation. And so fixation would be like staring at one object and looking at it and trying to um, make sure you can pick out all the little details of it. This is gaze fixation. Gaze fixation can be straight ahead. It can be off to the right or off to the left. It can be um, up or down as well. And all of these point to little bit different areas in the brain, especially the brainstem. Then we have eye movements. Eye movements can be broken down into fast eye movements or rapid eye movements and slow eye movements. <clears throat> and so the rapid or fast eye movements are generally called saccades. And that would be like, if I'm looking over here and then I quickly look over there, it's a very fast movement. And saccades are really important because they allow us to like map a new environment. When we go into a new room, we are looking and saccading in different areas. And that is allowing us to kind of map that world, map that new room, that new space. So that next time we go in, we know where we are. Also, it's really important that if we have to get out for some reason, some reason, uh, like let's say there's a fire, the fire alarm goes off, we kind of know our getaway, whether it be a window or the door we came through or another emergency exit, we are able to kind of map that space through our saccades. Um, next, we have those slow eye movements. The slow eye movements, there's a few of them. And rather than having a jerky movement like from boom to boom, we are going to be following something. And so there are three types of these slow eye movements. And the first one is the vestibulo-ocular reflex. 
which is a big word, but it's really just how our vestibular system is going to move our eyes. And so here, if I'm looking at the camera and I turn my head in one direction, my eyes can stay on the camera. Okay, that is a slow eye movement and I can move it any direction and we keep my eyes at one spot. And so what that does is it allows for us to have head movement while we are walking and we can stare at one spot when we have this head movement, okay? Um, next is our oculo, um, or our, our optic kinetic response. And our optic kinetic response is another portion that really it's just a, a following response of our eyes just kind of following something in, in our visual field. And then we get a, another fast movement after that. So the first part is just the slow phase um, of this oculo or this optokinetic response. And so this happens like when we are following, we're looking at a train that's going by. And so there's like box cars and you look at one box car and then jump to the next one. Look at one, jump to the next one. And so how we can kind of see this is we can use an optokinetic strip, okay, that is moving side to side. And so if we look at my eyes, maybe you can see this. If I'm watching it, my eyes are going to move. They're going to follow one dot, they're going to follow one stripe, and then jump back to the next one. The following is that slow phase. And then the fast jump back is more of that saccade, that fast phase. And the last part of a slow phase eye movement would be a pursuit. So if you watch my eyes, I am following my thumb side to side or up and down. And this would be more of that following a bird in the air so that we can have the ability to predict where it's going. And maybe um, if we're hunting, we can follow it to then shoot it down this type of thing. Um, if we're following a ball, like a football in the air, we can have that prediction of how fast it's going, where it's going, so that we can run under it to catch it. And so <clears throat> all of these eye movements are super important because they all are representations of different parts of the brain. And if one is not working as good as another, then that is kind of pointing us to one part of the brain. And what's cool is that they all overlap in the brain. And so if one eye movement is doing really well, but the other one isn't, we can kind of pinpoint where the problem is in the brain, okay? And so let's just look at one article here. Um, this article is from 2016, and it's called Eye Movements in the Wild, Ocular Motor Control, Gaze Behavior, and Frames of Reference, okay? And so I just wanna go right to the introduction and talk about the basics. And so here it says, understanding eye movements is essential for understanding all aspects of visual brain function including perception, attention, memory, and dynamic real world decision-making and motor control. Therefore, using eye movements, can, we can look at things of memory and cognition, attention, um, and focus. And then this like real world decision-making and also with motor control, we can use eye movements for motor control as well. Um, the spatial world is sampled by eye movements that organize the brain's input into local discrete snapshots. That's kind of what I was talking about with when we walk into a room, we get, we're kind of mapping that room. Um, in natural tasks, eye movements are always embedded with head movement and locomotor patterns. Basically, we're always kind of looking and maybe moving our head at the same time, or maybe we look and we want to grab our water, and so we look and we have uh, a hand movement with that. So they're all connected together. Um, okay, so here, eye movements have proved as a useful tool. This is why we look at them, a useful tool for a neuroscientist in, in, interested in attention, memory, and motor control. Therefore, again, we're able to look at how well you can attend to an object, how is your memory, and how is that motor control as well going on. Um, 
So then let's go look at a couple of different eye movements. We already talked about them, but the fixational eye movements like fixation. I didn't mention drift, but if we can't fixate on an object, sometimes our eyes will just kind of drift slowly to one side. And that could be just due to imbalances in the system and poor integration within our brain. The rapid eye movements, we have the saccade. Micro saccades happen, but they're so small, they're less than one degree, that we don't actually see them, we can't see them. They just happen to keep um, our phobia, keep our, our image on, the image that we're looking at, on the back of the retina, on the phobia, so that we can see it without it blurring. Um, we talked about the saccades being the fast ones. And then the last ones here are the slow eye movements, which is that vestibulo ocular reflex, like turning the head. The optic kinetic response, which is like following the box cars or the red and white strips. And then the pursuits, which are the following a bird or like a football or a ball in the air. Okay. And so next we'll go to this picture. All right. So. This picture is just showing, it's a description of the brain, and it has many different parts in the brain that are emphasized here, okay? And I don't wanna get into a lot of the detail, but I just wanna show that eye movements are so critical, eye movements in the visual system is so critical into um, looking at the different aspects of our brain. And so the parts that are circled and in this dark, bold, black uh, line, are the parts that are vital to all of these eye movements. Now, they didn't separate them out into the fixation or the fast eye movements or the slow eye movements, but we know that they are separated out a little bit. So, for instance, when we make an eye movement, the frontal eye fields and the parietal eye fields are involved and they talk to each other and they come down into the brainstem where our superior colliculus, our superior colliculus has all of our maps of our brain, maps of the visual field, but also maps of our body, like our hands, our face, our neck, our body. And then they also talk to other parts of the brainstem. This, these other parts of the brainstem is actually very general here. Um, there are many parts in the brainstem that are coordinated with eye movements including whether those eye movements are up and down or whether they're side to side. Um, and then also, are they slow or fast? And so the brainstem has multiple different sections in it that are all dealing with eye movements. The brainstem at the same time talks to the cerebellum. The cerebellum is behind the brainstem, and this is important in coordinating those eye movements so that we can coordinate not only speed, velocity, but also <clears throat> gain or how well we can follow a target. And at the same time, so those are like the, the basics of the eye movements, but we have multiple things that are contributing to those eye movements. We have our vestibular system uh, that comes from our inner ear, and that is going to allow us to do those vestibular ocular reflexes, right? But it's also gonna give us a sense of where we are in space, so that then if we know where we are in space and where our body is, we can get from point A in this eye movement to then point B, looking over to the wall or looking to another spot. Um, and if we don't know where we are in space, well then how are we supposed to get from point A to point B, right? So vestibular uh, system, vestibular nuclei are important in this connection as well, along, along with our, vis our visual input, right? So what we get, our visual feedback comes into our brain and then it's gonna to talk to multiple other areas as well. At the same time, besides the visual feedback that may give us more of these reflexive, like, oh, hey, there's you know, a bright light over there, I gotta look at it. Um, we have our frontal areas. Our frontal areas are giving us more of our voluntary, like um, you know, somebody says your name and you know, maybe wanna look at them right away. Um, and, you, you can decide whether you want to look over there or not, okay? Um, this is coming from our frontal lobe, which has to do with the executive functions, the working memory, and the attentional aspects as well. And so being able to stabilize our eyes on one target really requires a good frontal lobe as well. So these are the different parts of the brain that are kind of dealing with 
um, with eye movements. And so by studying these eye movements, we are able to truly look at different aspects of our brain and how well it's integrating along with how well these pathways that are coming down are working as well. Okay, so to summarize, we have a couple different types of eye movements. We have fixation versus actual eye movements. Those eye movements can be rapid or fast, or they can be slow. And each one of them are important for us in identifying what areas of the brain could be damaged, what areas of the brain need more work, what areas of the brain, if we improve certain eye movements, then that may relate to uh, improving attention, improving memory, improving gaze fixation so that we don't have a tight neck because our body doesn't know where we are in space. And therefore, it's squeezing our neck muscles to prevent this not knowing where we are in space. So working on fixation can help with that. Um, and so when, when you come to our clinic, the reason why we're looking at eye movements and eye movements are so important is because they are that window into your brain. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any other suggestions for topics in the future, again, please leave them below. Um, I thank you for listening and please stay healthy. Thanks.